Listen, everything happened for a reason. Seeds born, elders die, all things in season. These days, I'm just trying to get in where I squeeze in. Scratch that, I bust the game open till it's bleeding. Good afternoon, ladies. Hi, hi, hi Miss Liz. <laughs> How y'all doing? I'm so doing excited. Fine. <laughs> yep. I'm having fun. How you doing today? Day. Oh, just, I'm good. I stayed up way too late trying to get these orders out. You know, I put out two f- formulations that have actually been a bigger hit than I thought they would be, and one of them is um, an attraction blend for finding a long-term partner, and the other oh. one is for evading the police. Oh, <laughs> the five-ball joint. Who's to say in the past <laughs> four hours we've had more orders than we've had all week? So, <laughs> you hit it, you hit it. <laughs> no 5-0. Uh, no 5-0. Yeah, I saw no 5 oh, yeah. Oh, speaking yeah. of that, um, when you, um, I don't know if, if um, Risha told you, but, like, you have, we want you to introduce yourself, and then towards yeah. the end, you know, like 10 or 15 minutes, just shamelessly promote yourself. You know, I noticed you got classes. Tell us about St. <laughs> Felicia. Bitch, bitch, by and uh, root, root work and everything. You know all the yeah. Just talk I will about it. Certainly do that. I will make sure you do that. <laughs> cool. Now let me know, ladies. I've got the um, I, you know, I've got the uh, GPS on because I'm not from this part of Ohio. And okay. uh, let me know if you hear her talking or anything. I think there was just a ding. I just want to make sure it won't pick up in the recording. Okay. Do you that hear is. any bells or anything? Mm-mm. It's not? Okay. Okay. All right. Wonderful. Oh, wait. Just then I did. Yeah, that but was... it's all good. It's all good. She <laughs> could join the conversation, too. No, nah, she ain't going to talk. She's just going to ding. Did you hear that one? <laughs> okay. Got you. Uh-uh. Did you hear that one? Okay. Then, then it's not picking up. Good. Okay. Excellent. All righty, then. We can get started. Let me know when we're ready to go. Okay. All right, we ready right now. Go ahead, Miss Pat. Oh, wait, well, we oh you have... recording already? Yeah, it's yeah, recording I'm... already. Oh, okay. okay, all right. Okay, so... Did you all cut the recording? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We can cut, right? We can cut? Yes. <laughs> yeah, do your thing. <laughs> you cut the recording. Well, what y'all want to talk about today? You know, um, I'm just really excited. I'm happy that um, you all have me on your show. I tell you... Um, I've listened probably to every single video that you have on your YouTube channel. I love how you are unapologetically black, how you showed up and showed out. And I saw yes. that I blocked you off of her page, but, you know, you won't be the first. I'm I'm one of those people that she don't care either. So, you it's know, it's all right. It's so good in the hood. Yeah, that's, that's right. right. That's right. I can't. I don't like that because what happened when I went on that site was, she totally, like, disregarded the roots of hoodoo and conjure and root work. She just was going off of that um, commodified um, 1920s to 1940s era when they came in and learned everything they could and started mm-hmm. putting their own European twist on it and, mm-hmm. you know, just a total, like, they overtook it and, I have a lot of people like peers um who patronize her. And I'm like mm-hmm. like stop giving that woman your money. She doesn't care about you. She wants your cash. She don't care nothing about you. At one time we were we were on speaking terms and she was very fond of me. And you know, she mm-hmm. said at one time she didn't want to take any more white students. The situation is that she is a scholar who knows a bit about uh black history and um and she's been able, if you go in the back of her book, you can see all the sources where she was able to pull from, um, mm-hmm. you know. But the thing is, it's like, you know, the, 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 I find that to be kind of incredulous. Because when I was working for the food store, the, the discussion came up about the Irish, Irish influences in Houston. Very few people know that before Irish people became white, they were considered worse than black people in this country. Right. The reason right. why Irish people became black and white was because – they realized the power that right. the Irish slaves and that the African slaves could have because that's when you got into those differentiations of 
uh, uh, wouldn't call that indentured servitude, because there's a 1969 article written in Ebony Magazine by uh, Dr. Bennett, I believe, who, who it talks about how they would go and literally pull prostitutes and orphans and all kinds of other what they would deem to be Irish undesirables off the street, put them on slave ships and bring them here until they realized that they were not really compatible with the hostile conditions of the South. And that mm-hmm. is what led to the African slave trade. Um, but, you know, when we were we were discussing these matters, you know, some people on both sides, you know, black folks want to cry here and talk about, you know, well, that's like saying who is not black. And nobody said that, you know. Um, right, right. Just talking about how things went along. No doubt that there are some, some, influences i see it in my magic too with uh mm-hmm. european magic in hoodoo but the bottom line is everything from mojo hands to foot track magic all those things are african and I, there's no getting around it and, you know and this is the thing is, is i think that a lot of people especially and I, I, I have to stress this because um you know um european and brainwashed uh black people that want to practice this type of magic, want to find some way to make it Christian, okay? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, what happened, you know, hoodoo didn't start in the 20s and the 40s with the drugstore hoodoo. You know, you can read spiritual merchants and find out, there's a really good book about how these stores and things came into being. But what it didn't start then, you know. And and, and Catherine Iron was very much aware of, the black American backgrounds of right. the years. Okay. But right. so what, you know, what I have uh, witnessed her and have witnessed other people be very disparaging of African traditional religions, and that's a problem because that's right. where all of this came from. And what you see is hoodoo, hoodoo, um, Dr., I believe it was Dr. Hazard, was very correct. Hoodoo was a religion at one point. It was the conglomeration of West African who were separated, they did it by purpose, they did it by design, because I explained last week at the Black Witch Conference that if you take a person's faith and you break up their family, you have now destroyed a culture. So they were very, very much in tune with what it took to completely make a whole race of people lost only their religion, their family, but their power. Because people don't understand, they, they keep talking about this in, like, sociology circles and anthropology circles. Is our self-esteem is very much inherent upon our culture, okay? Right. That's why you have white people that believe that they are the best that society has to offer. And, unfortunately, this is why we have black people that doubt their own intelligence and power because it's been done that way institutionally. It's been done that way socially. So when white people found out how dangerous we could be with this magic, they started banning it. You all talked about it in your videos. They started making it illegal. But that didn't keep, like you said, the slave master from going and getting the slave to do magical workings for them, you know. Um, as usual, it's uh, just like I, I see a lot of black people in the church like that. They're very much interested in getting work done for them, especially when it comes to love and money. But they don't want to tell anybody that they're vis- visiting a worker. Um, yeah. In our history of workers, we didn't have stores. We didn't have websites. You know, The Skeleton Key was a very interesting movie because of some of its realistic portrayals, one of those being, you know, you went in the laundromat, you went, you know, to somebody's house, you weren't going to a storefront and purchasing candles with glitter in them. Right. (laughs) So, you know, um, it was, I I talked to my mother-in-law about it, and I said, what happened to all the workers in Chicago? Because I'm going to tell y'all. I moved out of Chicago due to um, the unfortunate murder of my cousin, who was a, a 27-year-old postal worker who had never had, uh, never been in pr- uh, trouble a day in his life. Straight, narrow, nothing, mm-hmm. nothing. It was, we don't know if it was mistaken idea, and we don't know what. But I knew that at that time it was really time for me to get out of Chicago. And the funny thing that I find very interesting is now that I have moved here to Columbus, Ohio, where I feel like I felt like 
this was going to be like the, the, the last, you know, like it, there was not going to be anybody here like me. The occult community mm-hmm. here is so strong, and what I find, especially with white people here, is they have a tremendous amount of respect for the separateness of our religion. Um, you'll see a less amount of appropriation than you do in a major metropolitan area like Chicago. You'll also see more things that you, to do real root work with, like I'm on my way now to Bowline Apothecary. I find things here in Ohio that I could not find in Chicago. And I was asking my uh, former mother-in-law about that. I'm like, wait a minute, what happened to all the workers? And she was like, I don't know, because you used to be able to find one in every apartment building. You know, Mm -hmm. even though you were in the north and even though they didn't have access to all of the herbs and roots that they did when they were in the south, workers were plentiful in Chicago. Um, I think that a big, big problem with this has been the Christian church. Um, yes. I, yes. I dropped this. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry for the background noise and the, the cars. Like I said, that's the thing about Columbus. You know that I don't know. Maybe it's their reverence for spirits that come out at night, but they roll up the sidewalks <laughs> up in this piece around six o'clock. So if you don't have what you need, you can pretty much hang it up. You know, it's not the this is not the all night type of place that like Chicago is. But you mm-hmm. know, my I remember my grandmother going to see a worker in my mother's apartment building and. I remember sitting as a young child while she was getting a reading and had the incense and the head wrap and all that stuff. And, you know, um, but I think it's really the church, the church telling us that it's wrong, that um, that um, you're going to go to hell. But, you know, if you don't believe mm-hmm. in hell, then you ain't got nothing to worry about. And so exactly. That's... Over, over, <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. I'm talking and talking. No, 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 no. Go ahead, go ahead. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing that resurgence because I'm telling y'all. Were y'all at the conference last week? Did any, either one of y'all get to go? No. I cry every time I think about how I missed that Jaguar conference. That, I'm like, I, I, but you. I, I sent you a message, too, because you had posted a status about it. And I was like, oh, I cry every time I see this. I really wish I could go. And you was like, well, if it don't cut into the rent, come on through. Right, and I'm like, right, man, right, if it right. <laughs> I was like, if it didn't cut into my life, but I know. I just, I wish I would have done some more hair that week because I could have just you know, came everybody. out and participated and met everybody. Right, but you know what? It's going to be even more phenomenal uh, next year. I've been avoided. I've been appointed the uh, public relations coordinator. We're going to have a three day event. We're going to have master classes on Friday. Which, you know, so if some people can't get in on Friday, there's going to be additional classes for additional fee. that are really going to dig down into serious things. And, like, for initiates, I'm hoping that, like, for initiates of voodoo, initiates of IFA, uh, initiates mm-hmm. of Kondoble, any of those particular uh, ATR, and hopefully we'll be able to find teachers for those master classes that are specifically for people maybe who are initiated or people who are interested in the tradition. And then I know that on Saturday we're going to have our regular program with several speakers and several breakout workshops. We'll probably be in a bigger location, although Wisdom's Books was just amazing. I am a vegetarian, mm-hmm. but I'm going to tell you that vegan food was on point, okay? <laughs> and Saturday night, y'all start now because I'm telling you, I am I am bringing Slay Edge, like Beyonce type <laughs> I hear you. Listen, I had an outfit picked out and everything. I'm like, look, by chance, if some, if a way opens up for me and I can go, this is the skirt and the shirt that I'm wearing. Please make a way. But I had the prior commitments and everything. But but go ahead. Well, now, where are y'all located? Where are you? Because we're also got, we also have memberships and we're going to be you know working to have like regional get-togethers throughout the year and stuff. Um, I'm really thinking about definitely having something for the Midwest here in uh, uh, Columbus before, you know, next year, maybe something for the summer sol- solstice. So I'm just wondering, where where are you all located? I'm in North I'm Carolina. In, okay. And I'm in New York. And you're in where? In New York. I'm in Queens, New oh. York. Okay. Oh, girl, I should have been able to see you when I was there. We went to the Botanicas. Um, in, in the Bronx, we went to original Botanica, and we went to another one, Botanica Oshun. I, I love going to Botanica. Um, but I, I do think that, you know, it's, it's, once again, you know, we've got some serious issues in our community 
where we need to start tapping back into our magic. There's a reason. Yeah. Let me ask you something it. because that is it goes right into this question I was going to ask you because I see a lot of people who are just coming into spirit in the way that they're mm-hmm. in physical. Like they understand now the relationship between the two, but they don't really understand it. And so when they're new to it and they're coming into it, they already want to know how they can hex somebody that hurt their feelings or yeah. I want to make this man love me who don't want me. I want to get revenge Ooh. on these people. With They have no basic understanding of energy, no levels of self-mastery, no self-understanding. And why do you think so many people are coming back? Well, we already went over why so many people are coming back to it. But what advice do you have for women and a lot of young brothers, too, who are like, I want to bind this person who hurt my feelings or my neighbor well, keeps harassing my children, you know? Right. Well, you know, you all have to understand this. I'm 47 years old. I've, <laughs> I've been practicing since 2013. Prior to that, I was always a spiritual advisor, but I was a Christian and I, you know, and I was a very realistic Christian. I was like a Gnostic Christian. I wasn't like a Bible beating Christian. Um, yeah. And and I went through a period of being agnostic. And so I had, you know, people that would come to me my entire life for help. So I've been a spiritual counselor all my life. I've started to involve magic and root work in it within the last three years, which is also mind blowing to me that. You know, this is a responsibility, especially because I'm being seen as an elder, and it's really mm-hmm. strange because I'm not, you know, in the, in the <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, not from, not from a vanity for, 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 uh, perspective, but from just from what I feel about learning. And I'm always yeah. going to have to, you have to understand, this is not a black thing either. This is a human condition. Humans right. want to, uh, there are a lot of hurt people hurt people. There are a lot right. of people who seek magic and, and of all colors because they're miserable or because right. they hurt, hurt them or okay. because somebody else hurt them. And what people have to understand is, like you said, about energy and about um, really getting your life in order. I can't tell you how many people come to me for readings, okay? And I'm going to say, say 99.99% of my clients have not been hacked. But they have come to me because they feel like somebody has worked on them and mm-hmm. they want to see what they can do. And I say, look, no boo-boo. And I also tell people, this is when, I, I'm, when you get a reading with me, it really is not always a nice experience. Sometimes it's oh. an experience that makes you cry. Sometimes it's an experience <laughs> that makes you mad. And my people, you can ask anybody on Facebook what their experience is with me as a reader. Because I, 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 you know, I don't take any shit. I'm not going to let you lie to me because you're always telling me that you got really, you fucked up, okay? Yeah. And so what I tell people is, look, I had somebody come to me the other day and said, I want to practice magic, but I'm having self-esteem issues. And I said, well, honey, what you have to understand is when you become what I call a sorcerer, you have to first of all have the knowledge that you are God. So you got a lot of people dealing with the vestiges of the Christian church, Christian church. And they're, they're scared to say that, but even the Bible tells you you are created in the image of the Creator. So the Holy, and I asked people at the conference, do you know what the Holy Spirit is? And nobody would answer the question. They might have known, but they didn't answer. And it was kind of a disappointment. I said, that's the God in you. So the first thing people have to realize is their responsibility as a God. Okay? The second thing is, is you can't be a healer if you are still broken. So a lot of people, mm. well, they want to jump in and practice magic, and I've seen it especially with these new hoodoers of all races. They want to mm-hmm. come and, you know, just jump in and practice magic. I get people that buy products from me and ask me, what do I do with it? I'm like, See, now you're crazy <laughs> now. You have bought all this shit, and you don't right. know what you're doing. So you're you doing know, readings for people, but you don't know what to do with this oil. Mm-mm-mm. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Everybody's not fit to be a reader. You can, anybody can read cards. I had to be convinced of my talent. I was also a professional photographer. I did not go into business until somebody had been shooting longer than I'd been living said, look, you need to go into business. So people who mm-hmm. were experienced diviners, I read for them. 
And they were like, oh, wow, you know, I am yet to have somebody come back and tell me that my reading was wrong. So I had done about maybe 100 readings for free with, with people who are experienced in the class. Before I went out and, like, I, I had a hater who was a former friend who calls herself a witch who was going around telling everybody that I was doing reading by Google and all kinds what? of things. But when I first started, yeah, I was, but I wasn't charging anybody. I was a right. These other cards. But after about, shoot, I would say about 10, 15 reading, Spirit was just like, look, yeah, I know this card means this, but this is exactly what it means to this individual. Mm-hmm. A lot of people can't do that. So, you know, what I okay. tell people is when we're on this magic thing, and that, if you look at my product, like, I don't actually, I don't even know if I have Goof or Dust on, on my, on my uh, page. I thought about putting it up, and my version mm-hmm. of Goof or Dust is called Somebody's Gonna Get It. I imagine somebody's <laughs> walking along, swinging a bat, <laughs> getting ready to go to work like Beyonce. But what I, what I tell you is, you know, look, I sell products right now, and uh, I'm going to expand my product line, but my my people, I joked at the conference, everybody laughed, I said, I'm a life coach. My first, mm-hmm. uh, most of my products have been for improving self, protecting self, cleansing self. Because when you do all these things, then what you're going to do is you find that your life falls into place. You don't really have right. to go at anybody. Because yeah. number one, if you're doing what I call CPR, which is cleanse, protect, reverse, you don't really have mm. to. You don't have to go after anybody because any shit they throw at you is going to go right back to them. And that's because okay. you've got the protection of your ancestors, of your spirits, of your creator. So you don't really have to worry about throwing at people. Um, right. In those extreme instances, when you do have to do work on somebody, you got to do a divination. And if you're not experienced enough to do a divination, you have no business doing magic against anybody. Right. So I have to talk a lot of my clients off the bridge because they are <laughs> always ready to fuck someone up. And I'm like, I tell people, I will bless you as soon as I will fuck you up. But every time I get my ancestors and be like, can I kill them? Ancestors be like, no. You know that's a favorite quote by you, right? Because yeah, that's, that's right. like. That's real because a lot of people don't I, – I, what I do see, too, because it's an imbalance, right? It's people who want to hurt people, and then you have people who are like, oh, we live in a utopia, life is good, everything is beautiful, you know, love and light, love and light. And I'm like, listen, sometimes <laughs> – Sometimes. <laughs> like, sometimes you got to cut it out. Like, come on now. Like, one yeah. sister – and this, this sister is beautiful. Oh, she's a beautiful spirit. I love her. And she was saying how, you know, fear is something that we choose. And I agree with her. And the enemy is is within. And I'm like, I agree with you. The enemy is within. But understand that, you know, there's a reason why low-income neighbor, neighborhoods have more uh, nuclear power plants. And, and you'll never find one in the suburb. You'll never find certain certain things that they'll dump into black neighborhoods or neighborhoods you won't find them in the white side of town like you have to open your eyes to the reality of what's going on so that way when you do the work it's going to the right place it's being directed yes. your energy is being directed in the right way yes. and, and you know what people don't was, seem to understand is that even these lower income whites it really makes me sad when i see them backing people that don't have their best interest at heart because i keep trying to explain to people when they get done with the black folks, who do you think they're coming for next? Thank you. So, Thank you. You know, their, their, their idea is but there cannot be a top if there is no bottom. So that right, is why right. they have to regulate socioeconomic classes. That's why they don't want to give health care to everybody because they don't want us all to live. And the, those right. who are sick because of the things they're putting in the environment and in the food, we then turn around and make them rich in big pharmaceuticals. Now, that's another right. thing we need to talk about, mental illness in the black community. Mm-hmm. A lot of people who come to me for spiritual help have mental illnesses, okay? Mm-hmm. Those mm-hmm. are a combination of spiritual and physiological, biological forces. People don't right. understand that the chemicals and the things that we're surrounded by, 
the uh, institutional racism. I, I wrote a post about this, and I'm hoping it comes back up in my memory. There's no way that we cannot be insane. When you regulate people to, to, for example, the project, and you stack people on top of each other like dogs, and then you, right. when, when the elevator goes out, and I saw this on all the Chicago product, projects, they don't fix them. So you're not getting right. it out unless you're willing to climb 30 flights of stairs. You know, you know how that feeling gets when you have some bills to pay. Like, see, I, I don't have – my memory is real short, okay? And I forget to pay, like, my cable bill, which I don't have TV, but my Internet. And because I work at home and I work for a school of psychology, professional psychology. So I'm very, very, very – I design all my courses. So I'm very, very in tune with mental illness and, and, and the effects that it has on our people, the people in Africa where we do projects where people have been victims of war, civil war, and, and, all, and colonialism, where they're going and trying to work with people who are suffering from, uh, and I call it TSD because it's not post, because we're still in the, in the trauma. And right. black people in this country need to live in a constant state of trauma. At the very mm. least, we are always concerned that if we get pulled over, we may not make it home. Okay? Hello. When, and, and then you start to think about that little bit of stress you go through when you can't make a bill, okay? But you said about, that you know, recently. But yeah, think about that. Think about that that little bit of stress that you go through because we're financially challenged, okay? Right. And um, I don't care what anybody says. I've got a master's degree. I've been doing what I'm doing for 20 years. But when I'm telling you that we still have to work twice as hard for half as much, this is true. And, and yep. so when you're in a constant state of trauma and fear. It eventually wears down on you. It eventually makes you mentally ill. It eventually makes you also paranoid. You think that everybody's out to get you, which is the reason why a lot of our brothers and sisters are misguided as far as what their magic is supposed to do. Magic is supposed to level the playing field. Judica Iowa right. said it best in uh, the Encyclopedia of uh, 5,000 Spells. She's a personal friend of mine and one of, the, uh, one of the premier and most prolific authors on witchcraft in general, and she recharges with all of it. Not just white folk stuff, not just like all kinds of things. You'd be surprised with the things that this is in these women's books. And because mm-hmm. we're black Americans, that's another thing we got to address is what what can we practice? Not just how should we practice, but Thank what, what you. magical traditions can we practice? Well, guess what? Right. You should be seeing DNA done because there's a whole lot of magical practices where I have ancestors that I right. can call on. Uh, sometimes they're nameless, sometimes they're not. And so as black people, we have this unique um, opportunity to stretch our magical wings. Now, there's a problem with that, though. You know, a lot of black people will get into practicing magic, and they will find themselves incredibly disheartened when they go into some of these European covens and traditions. You know, I was oh, mind blown with the level of racism in our pagan community. We're I was about to that. Let me ask Go you ahead. about that real quick because mm-hmm. what I, I'm, I'm in this, um, there's this, I join a lot of groups on Facebook. Mm-hmm. I join so, a lot of them for research purposes a lot of times because, believe it mm-hmm. or not, they have, like, amazing PDF files in a lot of them. Mm-hmm. So I'll go and download their PDFs and add them to my library and all that. But there's this one group I'm in with a lot of European, um, mm-hmm. I guess they call themselves um, Gnostics and light workers and healers, whatever. And one of it is it's like constant racist comments throughout the threads. Like they're always like one guy says nappy headed hoes, another dude made a joke about Mexicans. Like it was just it's a lot of like they just don't give a fuck. And you know I'm like how do you call yourself a person who is looking for a seeking enlightenment and trying to you because know they're not they're not they're right in those groups because they seek power. You gotta understand you gotta focus black and white, you know, I did not want to become a worker. This was the last thing on my mind. In fact, my daughter did a working before I ever did. It was extremely successful. <laughs> but, you know, I was introduced to not only voodoo, um, a Haitian voodoo by two white people, but to root work in general. And then I started to put the pieces together of mm-hmm. my life and realize, wait a minute, that was stuff my grandma was doing, I didn't even know it. I don't know why 
they stopped teaching us. Maybe she died before I got old enough, but I also know that the insanity in my family and the alcoholism that not only she was a victim of, but her offspring, you know, has a lot to do with ignoring that psychic power and that ability. And when motherfuckers are talking to you inside of your head, people are telling you that that shouldn't happen. You're crazy. And you try to strength to numb the voices. See, I've seen that. Uh, in my family, and then my uncle came home, and he started doing energy healing, and, you know, my family was like, oh, that's some old, some old bullshit. they just not honoring things that, you know, being programmed against them. I, I couldn't understand that, how my grandmother could see spirits, talk to dead people, but when my uncle came home and was trying to do a reiki on my knee when I busted it, she told him to get away from me with that bullshit. Maybe he, she just didn't see that as a valid magical practice or not. But you got to understand this. Everybody, which everything's going to be a microcosm of society. So for, mm-hmm. say, every five to ten white folks who are down and get it and understand, because that's another thing I see in the community. Sisters, incredibly down, married to white men. And the men, I've sat there, I've talked to them. You know, they get it. I, I couldn't I couldn't reconcile myself with it at first. I'm like, yeah, but you so down and then you were this do, but you know, there are white people that get it. There are actual allies. But I'm telling you, mm-hmm. you've got a certain microcosm in, in in paganism and it's going to reflect oh, I just missed my exit. It's going to reflect the rest of society. It's going mm-hmm. to. Okay. Well it, it, on the flip too and I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm listening. No, I was just going to say something. One of the other things that I noticed, and maybe I'm sensitive to it because I I feel like as black people in America, right, we've been here for 600 years, all right, mm-hmm. and we have been, been here longer surviving. Than we've been longer, right, longer than that, but I mean like transatlantic slave trade, 1555, right. um, 1619, and then up into, uh, when was it that they say the first 16, 17, whatever period, excuse me, period of time it was, we've been here for a very long time. Yes. We've been here pretty much, pretty much in a bubble on our own, trying to do the best that we could with what we have, right? Mm-hmm. And through it all, we've survived a lot. We've survived it all, right? And so, and maybe this is me, and please correct me because my perspectives can be radical at times. But in the same way that you have Europeans who, <laughs> in the same way that you have Europeans who will tell us that the way we do or the way we practice is wrong or incorrect, I find that a lot of our brothers and sisters in the motherland will tell us that in order for us to be legitimate in any type of ancestral lineage we have to be initiated we have to go to africa we have to learn under our elders there and we have to be initiated in the traditions that we try to bring and retain with us here how do you do you and to me there's a certain level of of and and again i do feel like my views can be radical but i feel like that's a bit arrogant um it can be it depends that's a, okay you know, that's the thing that's the thing about life Life depends. Like I said, just because you have, like I said, I was perplexed. I was meeting all my, my sister witches because, you know, brothers don't want to marry no witch. That's another thing, you know. Right. And I was perplexed. It was <laughs> me at first. I'm like, how does that work, you know? How can you be in this religion and, you know, and, and, but, but when I meet these people, enlightenment happens at all levels, okay? But it depends on the tradition. I'm going to be real, real about that. And I... Um, let's talk about Haitian voodoo, for example, okay? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I do plan to initiate. I do plan to go to Haiti, okay? Mm-hmm. What I'm going to tell you about our traditions in this country is because they've been so whitewashed. They've been right. so watered down. We've lost so much. Even if they weren't whitewashed and watered down, we still lost so much because, remember, when we were separated and thrown together, different nations, not tribes, because Africa is right. constant, not a country. Right. You lost things. You lose things. Now, let's, let's, let's be real, real here. Africa has lost a lot, too, due to colonialism and imperialism. Mm-hmm. They, there's a lot, you know, there's, there's just as much Christian opposition in Haiti to this way of life as there is 
here, okay? So let's not, you know, the, the, the Haitians there can be pretty violent, okay? Uh, the Christians. And I've watched videos where they're disrupting ceremonies, where they go and tear up, burn down parasols and kill mumbles and guns. But I want to get as close to the religion as possible. What I've seen is, is that these initiations in the United States, especially with non-people of color, they do what they want to do. And they call it Gnostic voodoo, or they do something else and call it voodoo. And, you know, that's a constant battle with, you know, and it's not all, all, all white people, because I know a lot of white people are like, no, that's not the way it's done. We're not going to do it like that. This is the way it's done in Haiti. This is the way we're supposed to do it. But for, by and large, that's not happening here. So for a, really, if I want to dig deep and I really want to be in an ATR, then, yeah, I'm going to go to Africa. I'm going to go to Haiti. Not because of what anybody else said to me, but I want to be closest to it. I'm going to tell you another reason why. I used to give at least $5,000 a year to the church when I tithed, okay? Oh. Mm-hmm. All right. When you think about the cost of initiation, that's per year. When you think about the cost of these initiations, whether you're going to Cuba, whether you're going to Africa, whether you go to Haiti, those people need that money. So if I'm willing to pay some, you know, Christian pastor who's pastor who's up here lying to me about everything, mm-hmm. that kind of money, then, yeah, I'm going to pay to support my people. I'm going to pay, pay to support people of color. Now, what I'm going to tell you is anywhere you can be um, tricked, anywhere they can lie, anywhere they couldn't tell you the truth. So you're going to have to work with divination. You're going to have to work with spirit. There are certain traditions that can initiate here, and I'm – I'm not going to say, like, in, in Haitian voodoo, if you want to be a mambo guy, you've got to go to Haiti. That's just the bottom line. I can't say right. about somebody else's religion. But personally, yes, as long as you can really, uh, ha- and that's, that's the thing, you know, people want to come in this stuff, jump into this stuff, and, and, and same thing happens with white folks. They go get the wrong coven, they go get the wrong people, and then they're disheartened, just like people that, like like pa- people who are pastor pastor at Long's Church, now they're questioning everything because their pastor was a closeted homosexual. Well, no, because that means you put your faith in that person. You right. put your faith in the spirit that guides that religion. So you do. You have to be real careful. You can go to Haiti and get scammed, but the chances are you get scammed in the United States are much higher. I, I can't believe some of the shit I've seen. <laughs> you got to be kidding. Folks talking about they're going to offer some KFC to, to the to the Loire. Or they gonna what? what? Stop, Stop playing. playing. <laughs> In New Orleans. In New Orleans. You go to a fat <laughs> number of white people. Come on now. So, we're going to take our religions and our practices back. We're going to embrace them. We got to do it the right way. Like, uh, there, was a, there was a priestess at the Black Witch Conference. She's like, you know, good and goddamn well, your ancestors weren't vegan. Now, maybe 50 years from now, you can Now, that's it. true. Right. Yeah, give that to your ancestors. My mama will cut me out right now in my fridge. I got and my daughter's a vegetarian, and I'm, I'm trying to change my diet. But I love meat. I'm a meatitarian. I ain't going to lie. And, you know, I got a grill for get A and the ancestors tonight. It's the month of the dead. Um, and I'm a grill for us. And, and you know, my daughter's not going to eat it, but I am. You know, but I'm not. My mama, my mama would just really stop talking to me from the dead, and she does. If I walked up there and gave her a goddamn soy patty, okay? No. Right. And this. Stop playing with me. So you got folks doing all kinds of fuckery with African <laughs> religion. You want to be in an African religion? Go learn from the Africans. Because, you know, you know and it's got nothing to do with, you know, I, I just think that, and plus, we, when we're paying that kind of money, for most people, that we, we, we spend thousands of dollars on hair, nails, all kinds of things, billions of dollars. That money, that for one person, could probably feed a village or a town for a year. So I look at it not only as my spiritual commitment, I look at it as my tithe, and I look at it as my missionary work. Because when, after I'm initiated, I'm not going to stop going to Haiti. I'm not going to go roll up in there just like the Christians do to spread voodoo. To yeah. black people 
who really want to practice voodoo to the motherland of voodoo as we mm-hmm. know it in the United States, which is Haiti. No, Voodoo started in Africa. I get that. Um, right. But that is stop and think about us. We're amazing and wonderfully made. We are mixed with so many different things. And I think that we cannot limit ourselves. And there's another thing I told the ladies at the conference last week. You know, um, you got to know the magic of your enemy. Mm-hmm. So, you you know, you think these people who don't like us, like you said, if they're in groups talking shit like this, what mm-hmm. is the likelihood that they're doing magic against us? Mm-hmm. And how can we fight that if we're not knowledgeable of it? It's yeah, hilarious, right. though, because you do you get the um, the love and lights, and then you get the, you know, kill everybody. And a love and light person, um, oh, I don't know if I call her love and light. She's a very good friend of mine. But she was like, when I put up the no five zero, she was like, well, aren't you worried about somebody doing something heinous um, and using that um, – formulation to get out of trouble. And I said, first of all, in voodoo, that's not my concern. Right. You know, you, 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 that's up to you. That's on you. That's between you and your God. I'm not going right. to regulate that, up, you know. But the bottom line is, I said, really, how heinous do you think the person is that's going to use this formula? Because I'm sure serial killers and uh, rapists and things like that, I don't think they're going to use this. Because they have no moral code. They have no spiritual code. Mm-hmm. They're spiritually bankrupt. That's not what we're talking about right here. We're talking about folks right. who are a little weed. We're talking about folks who are, are gambling. Okay. Right. We're talking about those types of people that, or just general, because shit, I'm a law-abiding citizen, but I sure don't want any actions with the police right now. Uh-oh. Me neither. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, you That's know, right. you know and, and, you know, unfortunately, like I said, People want to embrace this magic. They want to practice magic. But then again, they really want to hold on to the vestiges of the brainwashing they received in their prior religions. And what you know about spirituality, and like you said, what you know about life, it's a mixture. What comes up must come down. There's a wheel on the tarot card deck for a reason. You know, there are things that are going to happen that are good. There are things that are going to happen because they're bad. And I, I saw a quote that was really, really good when it comes to practicing witchcraft in general. And it says, sometimes we do the right things for the wrong reasons. Sometimes we do the wrong things for the right reasons. That's what you have to do to be a witch. And you have to have the discernment to know, what should I be doing? And see, a right. lot of these people, they start off, they don't even know what they're doing. But they want to go right. do something. And that's usually because their lives are out of control. It's usually because they have no discipline. It's usually because they have no self-esteem. That Somebody broke them somewhere along the way, so they want to attack people. So, you know, the thing is, is, you know, as much as uh, it's funny because my cousin, she's in her 30s. She's my apprentice. Her 8-year-old daughter is always in the root room with us. She knows a lot about magic. She tells everybody she can that she's a witch. My teenage child, she's like, yeah, no, I don't think so. You know, I I don't want to do that. I don't believe I should be altering things. Not everybody's cut out to be a witch, but at least she has the maturity to understand the responsibility of what you're doing. And that's right. why when these twenty some year old people want to be workers, I'm like, really? You 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 got a savings account? You you, you what's your plan <laughs> for? You know, what what what, what, what did you did you finish your education? Are you current in your student loans? You know right. and not that those are those are elitist types of things, but what they are are just like a college degree, a college degree don't mean shit other than the fact that you can be disciplined, follow direction. And another right. thing about a college degree is you can regurgitate the lies that somebody else has told you. That's cool. Right. But also you've learned how to research. You've learned mm-hmm. how the system works. you got to know the rules before you can break them. And yeah, so yeah. the biggest part with magic is, the first thing, the first working, the first things you need to be doing is self. Because Thank when you. you do self and you fix self, then, like, the bigger questions about what religious path should I follow, 
when somebody and another thing is when you do self you're also going to research your ancestors you're going to research your different religions so when somebody wants to come and tell you some fuckery about who did what in conjure you can go and say to them okay now you want some bullshit okay right you know, so you know your your the problems you had cat with cat iron wood. She was saying a lot of the same things um, about you know um, other Euro- European influences and kind of a few years ago. But then when my former mentor, members want, mentors wanted to talk about it, all of a sudden they were racist revisionists. So which one is right. it? You changed your tune. Exactly. Right. You know, um, people always want to try to exclude people. And I think that people see initiation as a form of exclusion. And, you know, but I'm going to tell you, uh, Mambos and Ngans and other priestesses and priests, they will sometimes make exceptions for people and initiate them, people who have no money, just to save Mm -hmm. their lives. But most of us have the capability to, it it is not, it's, it's not just about the money. It's not just about the travel. When you start to really, really practice this stuff, it is going to require a certain level of dedication and commitment that I know I was like, hey, I didn't sign up for this shit. Well, what? Wait a minute. What's going on? <laughs> what? I just had a conversation with a sister about that last night. I was telling her, and she's on the line now listening. Um, Naki, say hi. You said what? Don't embarrass me, girl. All right. I thought she was on the line. She said she was going to be on the line. But listen, what I what I said to her was I was told some some years ago by an elder in the Ife tradition that um, Yansa or Mama Oya has my head. And I mm-hmm. told her I don't really know. I know what it means, but I'm not – I'm consciously – Keeping myself ignorant, I guess, to what it, what well, the weight of know, that responsibility is. Yeah, but um, that's the thing, you know. Um, I'm going to give you the story. I, I always love to go back on Bible stories because we've all been programmed with them, you know, from birth. And, you know, I think that was Jonah who ended up in the belly of the whale because he mm-hmm. kept running from spiritual instruction. At some point, mm. all of us who are called, if we don't follow, if we don't listen, we're going to end up in the belly of the whale. So all I can say to you, sister, if you've been called, especially Oya, you need to pursue that. Um, you know, we aren't promised days. We aren't promised years. Now, I'm about to walk up into this apothecary, y'all, because I don't want them to close on me. So I might have to tell somebody I'm on the phone, please don't talk to me, okay? Because every time I come okay. in here, they're like, ah, okay, just to prepare you. Okay? So, <laughs> All right. No problem. When you're called to this type of um, process, you have a certain responsibility. You can't run from it. Um, it's only going to – if you do it and you do it right, it's only going to improve your life. You know, all my family was like, oh, you practice witchcraft. It's so funny. My products are sold here, and I just walk past the display, and I'm just like, oh, wow, this is really cool. Um, <laughs> but my family <laughs> told me, you know, my family told me, oh, you're going to go to hell. You ain't going to have, have nothing. And, girl, I done managed to move by uh, a, a brand-new house that's, like, twice the size of anybody else's in my family. You know, yes. you got to mm-hmm. really just – Go with your spirit. You've got to really, really, really trust your spirit, okay? Right. And you really, you know, if you're being called, there's only going to be a certain amount of time that you can run from that, okay? Mm-hmm. It's, 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 it's okay. just going to happen. And and it's okay, you know, it's like you got to be like, you gotta, you're like, okay, I really got to figure out what I'm going to do, how I'm going to do it, how I'm going to pay for it. But when I tell you that Lara will make a way for you, they will make a way for you. The Orisha, they will make a way for you. Right. So, you know, the, the thing is, is, you know, don't worry about that so much. Learn what you can. Um, take your time. A lot of people, they really just want to jump into a spiritual practice. And what happens is, is we get tied up with the wrong people. We get tied up mm-hmm. in the wrong practices, and our spirit suffers for it. So what right. we really need to do is we really, really need to learn how to trust our spirit. Because what's going to happen is, is when you learn how to trust your spirit, they're going to send the right teachers your way. 
They're going to send the mm-hmm. right money your way. You ain't got to worry about none of it. It's right. going to fall right. into place, and everything that you're supposed to do and you're supposed to learn, it's going to happen for you. But don't, mm-hmm. when it comes, when it presents itself, when it says, this is what you got to do, this is what you got to do. Right. And I, what I found was, is it was when my life started, okay? This mm-hmm. is when things really started for me. So, you know, I, I, in a way, I feel really kind of sad because I feel like I wish I had done this prior in my life. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I also realized that there are things I just wasn't ready for, you know, right. and there's things that sometimes I still think, oh, man, I'm not ready for this. But just like anything, when you're when you're studying in school and you you get something and you're being called to a challenge, and then all of a sudden you're like, I don't think I can do this, all of a sudden you can do it. And mm-hmm. that is empowering. So that's why I tell people who are just practicing magic, especially when they're talking about, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't, you know, I have low self-esteem. Do magic on yourself. Watch yourself change. Yep. And then you're going to start to be like, oh, my God, I can do this. You know, mm-hmm. so, you know, I'm serious. Like, when I went to go buy my house, they could not find my tax transcripts from the last year, okay? And the, I was in danger of not being able to purchase my home. And um, it was very upsetting. It was very frustrating. So I went and did what I was supposed to do. I went and made my offerings to my spirit, okay? And, like, even though I'm not a Christian, I always uh, make offerings to St. Jude because I'm not looking at him as, like, the Catholic saint. I'm looking at him as the spirit of impossible situations, the solution of impossible situations. That's what I'm looking at, Okay. And so when I mm-hmm. went and I made those offerings to him, you know, and I made them to Ogun because I needed him to fight this battle for me, he fought it. And they were like, oh, we'll make an exception. You get your taxes when you get your taxes. It's all right. Send them to a place. Wow. You see what I'm saying? So yep. don't, don't do this stuff because it's cute. It's fun. I get to have my stuff in stores, all that stuff is really cool when, when good stuff happens. And I'm just also not doing it for the hell of it, okay? Right. I'm doing it because it makes a change in my life. It makes a change in other people's life. That is why I'm doing it. So, you know, and all I can be is an evangelist for how this has changed my life, how the root has changed my life, how the people who, who have taught me things have changed my life. That's all I can do, you know. Um, I can only talk about what, what I've experienced and how good things have been for me. And so what people don't, have, don't understand, and that's one of the things that we really have to talk to people about magic, especially our people, who jump off into this and want to do those things that, you know, you guys are discussing. I apologize for the background noise, you all. I'm actually yes, here I'm... trying to get stuff, and I'm really kind of sad because none of the stuff I need, I'm finding. So um, <laughs> I have to go order stuff. And I always try to support local stores, especially the ones who support me. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, it's it's just um, – you know, people, it's not, that's not what you're here for. You don't go and join a church so you can hurt people. So why would right. you consider doing this? This is a spiritual practice, you know, but at, at the same point, let's look at the Psalms. If you want to, I always make comparisons to Christianity because that's what people understand, okay? And mm-hmm. what I say is, okay, in church, you know, there are Psalms that there are curses and they're very effective and you know, um, but you're not. That's not going to be your first go-to. So you, you know, as as any spiritual person, you should be play, praying for peaceful resolution. You should be working to uh, have your soul clean. You also should only be doing stuff that you're justified to do. You know, if it's justified, I don't care if it's a blessing or a curse. If it's justified, I'm going to do it. And then justification can only come through constant communication with your ancestors, so that they will communicate to you properly when you do a divination. Other than that, you, you just can't be out here wilding out, doing whatever you feel like you're doing. It's irresponsible. And if you believe in this, 
like you're supposed to believe in this, you're going to see that. Right. So that's the, true. That's the biggest part. Yeah. I wanted to ask you something about the role of women in the black community in magic. It looks to me like women are like waking up to their magic like crazy mm-hmm. right now. And they, mm-hmm. um, they often don't have teachers. Like back in the day, you would learn certain things from your mom or your grandmama. So they kind of get into whatever they see their peers doing and everything like that. And they talk about mm-hmm. the divine, divine feminine a lot. So I was wondering mm-hmm. if you could talk about how you see that. Oh, my goodness. I hear us breaking up. Can you guys hear me? Because I might have to go back outside. I, I can, can hear, hear you, guys. You. Okay, good. Okay, divine feminine. You have to understand um, – you know, there's a lot of sexism also in religions, including ATRs. And I heard a story from a friend that made the priest kind of mad. They were like, the reason why women don't get a calabash uh, at the end of their initiation, you find the men do, is because we already have one. you got to understand that we are creators. Nothing on this earth exists without us. Okay? And the divine feminine is so important because we are we birth things. We, 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 we are the only beings on the planet at this particular time and maybe other beings on other planets that can do other things. But in this particular planet, at this particular time, women are birth everything, okay? We, if you want to talk about being the masters of creation, that's who we are, okay? Now, anybody can plant a seed, but who's going to take care of that seed and nurture that seed and make sure that that seed grows? That's what we do. So um, we, all, we really need to tune into that. That is also why you're going to find that more uh, women practice than men in any race. Women are usually the witch doctors. Women are usually the witches, and that is the reason why. So it's very important. But at the same time, I think that we should not underestimate that just like we can't make the same mistake that – sexist men do. We can't underestimate their contributions to what um, they bring to this. Okay? So, you know, it's a dual. There's a masculine, there's a feminine. Like I said, there's an up, there's a down, there's a yin, there's a yang. It's, 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 it's what it is. I swear, I'm in the store and it's like, I th- this is the thing, when you live in a community full of practitioners, everybody wants the same thing you do. I'm just sitting here looking at my list, and I'm pulling some stuff off the shelves, but it ain't nothing I need. This is some stuff that I want because the stuff that I need is gone. Well, they ain't found Let me ask you. Crash yet, so that's, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> Go ahead. Ask me whatever you, you want to ask me. You said I know that um, focusing on self is, is number one because everything mm-hmm. starts with, with you, with one. and. Right. Doing our magic on ourselves is that has to be the primary focus. But there have been a lot of um, group meditations to fight police brutality. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Group meditations okay. related to the political climate in the U.S. right now and in the world. Not just really. Meditation, ritual, blood ritual, and, sacrifice. Right, blood ritual, sacrifices. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And my yeah. question is, as a unit. As a, as humans, as a people, as black people in America, extending out to white Americans, extending out to Mexican Americans, whoever believes that there's a problem that we all need to fix, what mm-hmm. should we be working critical juju on right now? Like, what we issues be deserve on energy? Justice. We should be, the first of all, we need to be working on justice and revenge on the people who are killing us. We should be, okay. we should be, we justified revenge, you know, just like war. War is justifiable homicide. Okay, you gotta understand mm-hmm. that. War is justifiable homicide. So we are at war. We are at war, um, in our communities. We are literally struggling to live. It was bad enough before when they were just taking us out with the lack of resources and the lack of education and the lack of health care. That was one thing. But now we're in a whole different ball game, honey. And so, yes, that's definitely what we need to do. We need to be looking at healing and cleansing work on our own people, protection work on our own people, and we need to be working on justice and revenge for people who are literally getting away with murder. That is what we need to be concentrating on. But like I said, 
We have a lot of folks out here talking about their practicing, and they don't know what the hell they're doing. So, you know, some people just need to sit by and light a candle and chill until they know <laughs> what they're doing. You know, right. if, if, you know, you make things bad for everybody. It's so funny, though, because I was trying to get blood for a ritual and couldn't find it anywhere, but I found it at the International Grocery Store. I'm telling y'all, anytime you need something, if you can't find it, go to the International Grocery Store. And chances are they have it there because I'm sitting here looking for some of the stuff I need and I'm really sad right now and I know that I'm going to have to go there. Um, because mm-hmm. you have to understand, people in all different cultures, except for these Abrahamic religions, they also have magic. The Catholic Church is full of magic, incense, and everything else. And all of these Christian holidays are nothing but pagan holidays converted for Christianity so that it would not be boring for, right. you know, people to go, you know, to to, be, to, turn, to change their religion. Okay? So, you know, we're, we're looking at all of that. Um, you know, you got to understand, you know, things people have been told, things that people have been lied to about. It takes a really long time to get down to the truth. And sometimes I have to sit up and be like, you know, all of this is something that some other man said was true. I could be right. mm-hmm. just as wrong as anybody else. And it's, it's, but it's a matter of faith. And all I know is maybe it is my faith that powers this. Um, but I know definitely the root power is it because you got to think about this. You know, um, these particular things that uh, the, the roots create medications. And when we're talking getting back to mental illness in the black community, um, a lot of us won't seek treatment. A lot of us won't use Western medicine. And I believe in everything in moderation and, and, and give and take and everything. And you have to understand that Western medicine is all of these roots on steroids. So right. that's why you're going to have some side effects. But sometimes you have to have it. Sometimes you have to have it to save your life. That, you know, I'm diabetic. I have high blood pressure. Both of these have become part of our genetic code. Why? Because mm-hmm. of centuries of trauma. They have literally mm-hmm. altered our DNA, okay? Okay. I'm going to be a damn fool if I'm going to sit up there and say, oh, I'm not going to take my insulin today. I'm just going to have some of this cinnamon. Because I'm not going <laughs> to die. But I right. work to find ways to work on myself so that I don't need that intervention from western medicine and and so people don't have an idea people you know it's just like anytime you see somebody that goes in and gets saved they're all of a sudden saved you know they're like oh you know they want to talk to you about can i talk to you about jesus christ today can i do this today can i do that today and um it's like you know they're really really frantic and you and they're excited and you can't tell them nothing Okay. Um, same thing happens with people who practice magic, and they may may or may not be correct in what they do. Okay. And this dude is so loud here in the background of this story. Can he talk any louder? I know. <laughs> you know, it's like, are you going to be that fucking annoying? I mean, seriously. And I'm probably like, but but in, in any case, you know, we really do have to have a balance. People do need teachers who are very, very, very um, used to and and, come, and live the tradition. And so when people are saying that you got to go to Africa, because just think about how we are in America. Think about how we are with instant gratification. Think about how we are with commercialism and how they're – are they really living this? Or, or are they, you know, hoping and praying that they're living this? Whereas voodoo is life in a lot of parts of Haiti. It, there's no such thing really as initiation, right? Um, in initiation, oh God, I wish he'd shut up. In initiation, <laughs> you know, that's something that's a Western concept. And, 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 and Haiti, you born into voodoo. Those are just like ceremonies, rites of passage, but it's not the same. So, right. you know, you've you got to be someplace where this is life, because here you're going to always get a commercialized, changed, and altered version, just as, just like what happened to Hoodoo. So you got a lot of people just like me. When I first started practicing, I thought I could use certain things, do certain things, you know, remain a Christian and do this. And, and that was 
a watered down, unrealistic concept of the practice. So I encourage people to be as deeply as immersed as they possibly can be. And if that means going overseas and, and going back to the motherland or going to Haiti and doing so, I firmly believe that. But um, I don't know. I would never look down at anybody that got their initiation here. So right. there's a balance. You, you can't be that kind of ignorant. Not everybody's going to be able to afford to do that. That, that. that doesn't mean that every single initiation that is done here is, is bad. That's not what that right. means. So, you know, every, people just refuse to do a balance of anything these days. It's all or nothing. And that's not good. You can't live your life like that. You've got to live a balanced life to be a practitioner. you got to understand that you're not perfect. You, when I'm a healer, when I'm doing readings for people, sometimes it is like, oh, this is for you too, boo. Don't play. You know, you ain't perfect. Right. It's something you need to be paying attention to. Happens all yeah. the time. So you just, you know, people who are extremists in any particular form or fashion always listen to them with half an ear because if there's nothing extreme one way or the other. Most things in this life are somewhere in the middle. So what about what about um, Kanja, right? Let us say mm-hmm. somebody's not particularly psychic. Right, but they want their ancestral heritage, and they want to be able to do, you know, some basic things for themselves. I want to be able yeah. to cleanse my yeah. to cleanse myself. Yeah. They can come yeah. to you and take a class, and you know, and that would introduce them and put them in touch with that part of their roots exactly. and that ability. For example, that's, right? Yep, that's how I started. Like I tell you, man, I wasn't trying to do this, y'all. Y'all, <laughs> I wasn't trying to do this. I was trying to learn. I have a master's degree in literature with a concentration in um, black female literature. And um, I can't um, tell you all how it was, it, was, it was scary. It was challenging. But, you know, I didn't intend to do it like this. All I wanted to do was learn my history, learn about the magic, do, do the work, you know. And I still do very little work for other people. Um, and, um, it, you know, I just, because I, I, sometimes you just don't know if, um, you know, sometimes, sometimes their spirits aren't even talking to me. Um, right. And, and, and so you can always, people, that's like asking, can people pray? Of course you can pray. Of course you can light a candle. Of course you can take a cleansing bath. Of course you can do all of those things. You, and, you know, and like what you're going to find is, you're going to find that in magic there are a lot of correlations between the herbs and the roots that are used in this practice and the herbs and the roots that are used in other forms of witchcraft. So, yeah, yeah, you can do that, and you should. That's your first step. Some people would not go any further than any of that, okay? Mm-hmm. That's, that's it. That's it, and that's okay. Some people just want to know. Shoot, some people want to know just in case – they can tell for sure whether or not somebody's really throwing at them. You know, right. that's, that's really important. You probably just want to know so you know. I'm going to tell you what I find most beneficial getting into the study of myself, my history, um, conjure, root work, and, like, mm-hmm. mastery of energy. The best thing mm-hmm. to me out of all of this, is being mm-hmm. able to discern, like the gift of yes. discernment, because yes. it's lacking. It's lacking in so many of us. Like we, especially women, like in my age, bre- and it doesn't matter what age you are, as a black woman in America, like how you said, we all crazy in our own special ways. It's like <laughs> if we could <laughs> if we could gain access to this information as a large group, we could start helping each other instead of hurting each other. Like, we could use this magic to say, listen, girl, I'm going to keep it real with you, and you're not going to mind that I'm keeping it real with you. You, Your feelings Mm -hmm. are not going to get hurt because you know that I'm coming from a place of love and honesty. And that's, Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Because we're all working on loving ourselves, knowing ourselves, and trusting, you know, the whole nine. Mm -hmm. So my question, I guess, like, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. 
No, that's exactly. Now, you, you hit the nail on the head, honey. That's exactly why we should be able to do this because we have lost our radar. We don't know bullshit when bullshit is given. I mean, and that's not just with that's not just with like magical stuff. You know, right. if you don't believe in something, you're going to fall for anything, okay? And what I'm going to tell you is these fools will tell you anything. That, like, for example, they lied to you about your culture. They lied to you about your religion. They lied to you to you. all this stuff with evil, 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 right? Right? Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then now we find out, no, they just didn't want you to use it because they didn't want you to be able to kill their asses. Exactly. Okay? That's, <laughs> that's what the so, – and I just finished – yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. And some people can't do that. There are some people that will not uh, go into the military because they don't want to kill people. They're conscientious objectors, right? There are some mm-hmm. people out here, and I'm cool with that. If you, if your gift and your gift is healing and blessing work, then by all means, boo boo, do your thing, okay? But don't sit up here and judge somebody who can really take some of these motherfuckers out. They need to be right. saved. You know, and, you know, um, I'm, I'm all about leaving people alone. I don't, like, you know, you, that's another thing, fooling around in these Facebook groups with these people that just don't know how to act, ain't never had no friends, and they want to throw because you said something that hurt their feelings. you got to be real careful who you deal with in this community. Like, uh, that's uh, the one chick got mad at me because... I wrote, a, I did a video before I left, and I'm like, I know y'all from Facebook, and we're good and everything, and I'm your sister, and I got nothing below for you, but don't touch me, because I'm not right. a worker, and I don't know, I, if you're sitting here watching me on Facebook every day, and you got shade, I don't know that. I don't have mm-hmm. time to uh, sit here and do a reading for every single person I know on Facebook, okay? Right, right. Let's just keep it cool. If I know you, like my girlfriend, who I hadn't seen in 30 years, we grew up in the same church together, and then we show up together at the Black Witch Convention. I'm going to hug you. It was a Sealy moment from Color Purple. We was doing the patty cake in the field, okay? <laughs> I'm, I'm like, because I'm going to touch you, Mama Omi. I'm going to touch you because we've been bonding. We've been talking about how to do this thing for this whole year. And, I, you know, every time you have a question, whatever, they did most of it. I really didn't do anything. I was just kind of there if you had a quick question. But I'm going to be heavily involved this year. That's my sister. I'm going to be. But you know what? I've had spiritual sisters that, I mean, I have been like tight, like sisters, like like blood, sisters that I would do any, mm-hmm. I would do everything for, people who kept me in the craft when I wanted to leave. You understand? Mm-hmm. And we don't speak anymore. Right. And, mm-hmm. you know, um, it happens. You know, when you become, and especially when you're a public worker, people just, you know, got all kinds of ridiculousness going on, mm-hmm. all kinds of, of ridiculousness. And so you just have to be like, you know, uh, very discerning of, of who you're spending your time with, who you're talking to about your practices. Who, I don't let everybody into my house to come for a reading. That's what they make video conferences for. You know, I don't run uh, 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 an in-and-out business in my house. I'm not licensed commercially. And I actually had somebody in the city of Chicago call the authorities on me. And they came really? to my house. Oh, yeah. Talking about, we heard you were uh, – we, we, we want to talk to the, uh, the psychic. That's what they said when they came to my house, and I realized that they had on, uh, like, popo-type windbreakers. And I'm like, well, who y'all? And they were like, well, we're with the, the department of, I guess, the business license department, right? Mm-hmm. And they were just like, um, you know, you know, we got a call that you were running an illegal um, whatever out of your house. And I'm like, look. I do readings for my friends at home. I don't let everybody in my house, okay? Mm-hmm. So I don't know who called you and told you that, but most of my readings are done online because you can't have everybody in your house, you know, just period. You can't have everybody right. in your house. Um, and and so, you know, you, you do have to be careful with things like that, you know. But people who want to start to learn about this, you never know. I certainly didn't know where it was going to take me. I certainly would have told you I'd have been on the phone with you right now, you know? <laughs> right. You know, I think everybody gets it. I've never seen a worker that didn't have complaints, like, online and stuff like that. And these are people that I did readings on. So I know they're mm-hmm. on point. I think said that they were on point. But sure enough, they had some disgruntled person that said so. So to me, you ain't doing nothing unless you've got somebody that's 
that um report exactly. you or try to do something. <laughs> right. Well, the thing is, I got haters, but most of them never come to me for a reading. You know, if you don't have haters, then you're doing something wrong because yeah. you know, they're going to be jealous. People are yep. not going to be um, really thrilled about your what you're doing, you know. Um, it's mm-hmm. going to happen. That's life. That's life in the big city, sometimes in a small town. When you get it what you mm-hmm. do, people are going to not like it. Yep. It's, uh, it's course, in a small town, I tell you. What it is. is. You know, it's, you know, you are going to have people all the time. If people, you know, it's really funny. Like I said, I just try to stay humble because I ain't really trying to, um, you know, pretend like I'm anybody special because that's not what this is about. But you're still going to have people that are going to be like, oh, she thinks she all that, you know, look at her. And that's why some of them want to practice. You know, somebody got mad at me because I said, don't put your hands on me. Don't touch me. And she was like, I'm sick of these depressed ass, scary ass witches. You need to stay your ass at home. And then I guess she didn't know who I was. Oh, Um, my goodness. Mama (laughs) only let her know who who I am. (laughs) Right. And I'm sure that woman saw me making money hand over fist at the uh, mm-hmm. at the convention. Not because I'm all that in a bag of chips. I know what I'm doing. I'm knowledgeable and I'm responsible and I'm about self improvement. I'm not about this flossing and walking around with a bunch of uh, you know skeletons and stuff on me and feathers and mm-hmm. playing up to the stereotypical image of I'm a suburban band mom, okay? Short of the right. Life. And well, if I'm walking around with some pentagrams on, don't nobody know what I'm doing. You know, mm-hmm. it's not about that. You know, and so people need to understand this is spirituality, this is religion, this is medicine, this is yeah. responsibility, this is vigilante this is taking care of your community and all of those are not easy orders to fill so yes okay. people but but because it's such an amazing thing to be able to do um a lot of people come in and they really think that you know because you're not supposed to walk around talking about oh i'm broke but people really think that you can get rich off of this too you know, people seem to forget in old days, you know, the woman, the root worker in your neighborhood got paid in chickens, okay? Yeah. She got, yeah. You know, she got, she got taken care of. She <laughs> ate, but she wasn't rich by any stretch. She was taken care of. Her Her needs were seen to, which is what's supposed to happen. Just like um, Mambos and Ugans, when they're doing work in the community, they're not supposed to have jobs, okay? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so... You know, and, and we are supposed to take care of them. Um, but a lot of people, and that's due to some of these commercial entities, see this as a get-rich-quick opportunity. They think, right. and, and, they, and they love everything about the power and all that good stuff and whatever, but then they see this and they think, oh, I can even do this for a living. I still have a day job. That's not what this is about. It's not about getting mm-hmm. rich. It's just it's right. not about any of those things. So, you know. It's it's um it's all about taking care of your people. It's all about taking care of yourself. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's 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 all about those things. Okay. And once people really understand that, have a grasp of that, and are responsible about this work, they will realize the level of importance. They're going to realize the level of responsibility. And if you are a person of color and you work in a group, you need to be looking at things like our communities, Standing Rock, um, things, Kim Trails. These are things that we need to be paying attention to and institutional and social racism. we got to pay attention to these things because I sure going to have my cauldron going the night before the election and when I get right. back from having my vote. You <laughs> have to do these things, and it's not something you just do because you're mad at somebody or you yeah. want a man, you know. You may want to – people start that way. 99.99% of my clients are women, and most of the products that I sell have to do with um, cleansing and love, okay, um, or, or getting people to cooperate in love, you know. I don't sell a lot of what they call the more dubious um, items online uh, because, like I said, I think that 
a lot of people don't need that stuff. They really need to get an understanding of what the power is to take care of self and take care of community first because we're not taking care of ourselves. We're not taking care of our communities. And once we start doing that, we can be more effective magical practitioners. Are the, are the majority of your people that your clients you said they were women, but are they also black? Or are they educated? Or are they from up north mm-hmm. or down south? Yeah, Online? most of them are black, and because of who we are and what we do, most of us are educated. Because you got to remember that we are the most we are the most uh, pro- progressive. We're making statistically speaking, we're getting more education than anybody else in this country. Black women. So, yeah, these are black women who are very educated. Uh, Very few of them, the people that I really deal with on an everyday basis, most of them have advanced degrees. Yeah, Mm -hmm. and I have a master's degree. And so, not you know, they're they're, they're, they're also activists, okay? Um, So a lot of them are educated. A lot of them are smart. A lot of them are tired of the Christian church. And a lot of them are handling, you know, their business. So, yeah. And they want to handle their business even more. You know, I just, I sold a whole bunch of products to a psychologist. And I was telling her we need more people who are in ATRs and who understand our religion and our belief systems. We need these people in our mental health practices. So when somebody comes right. and says that spirits are talking to me, they're not going to look at them and laugh at them. Yes, I feel that's so true because I remember in the Latina community, community wet back mm-hmm. when crack was out there was a baby and the baby was acting strange because it was a crack baby so they mm-hmm. went and they did something on the baby because they said the baby had spirit you know but something went wrong and the baby died but i was thinking to myself that's just a, a miscommunication because if the baby has crack in it it does have spirit so they, were mm-hmm. right about that, but they needed a translation between west and their african derived you know, mm-hmm. thing. and that's the thing. I think all the people that are crazy and talking to themselves, I think they're talking to somebody. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So they it's usually like usually are. Like, they usually are. They usually are. Yeah. And it's and it's very unfortunate because people don't understand the spiritual aspects of mental illness. And yes, there are mental. There are there are chemicals uh, that misfire in your brain because, like for me, uh, my family. I come from a family of clinically depressed people. There is something in our DNA that causes our brains to miswire, and then it doesn't hurt. It doesn't help that they are ignoring their psychic abilities. So you can get all these voices, right, right? And then you got all this shit that goes on in life. So yeah, I take antidepressants. I'm not gonna sit up and apologize to anybody, but do I believe that at some point there will be a way that I can work with myself spiritually and naturally where I may not need that stuff anymore. But at the same time. You know, this this conversation is so important to have because, like you said, mental illness, we have stigmas attached to treatment of mental illness. We Mm -hmm. don't want to be labeled. We don't want nobody calling us crazy. Mm -hmm. We don't want nobody looking at us like we off or weird. But it's Mm -hmm. like if we don't acknowledge the issues that we have, and not even just the issues, but the gifts that we have, the abilities that we have to kind of vacillate between the physical realm mm-hmm. and the spiritual realm. Mm-hmm. And because it's so, it's, it's, it's not normal. And if it were normal, we might be less depressed about it. You know what I mean? And so it's yeah. like, you know, and, and, and I, I read this article not that long ago about a young brother. He was um in his early 20s, and his dad took him to see a shaman in South America. Mm -hmm. He was schizophrenic. And when his father took him to see the shaman in South America, he helped him work through a lot of Mm -hmm. what it was that he was dealing with. And he, he wasn't, he didn't come off of his medication, but he was able to process what was happening to him from a mm-hmm. spiritual perspective. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's a twofold. We, it's twofold. Mm-hmm. And that we really got to get black people who are involved in these spiritual practices in for mental, to, to help with mental health treatment because it's twofold. Um, you, you can't go to just anybody and say, I got voices in my head and have them get it. You know, mm-hmm. and then, you know, and, and black people, you know, they've been told. And, I mean, you got to think about all the things we've been told so we internalize this stuff. We internalize this because they don't want us to get treatment. They want right. us to stay crazy. 
Them right. Said, oh, see, we told you them niggas was crazy. That's a line in pockets. Exactly. You know? <laughs> exactly. So you got, well, I, you got to, you got to take care of each other spiritually and physically. We got to change the way the things we let in our mind. We got to change the way we, the things that we are letting our children be exposed to. There's a whole bunch of stuff that we got to change because mm-hmm. these kids today, all colors, they're crazy. They don't have mm-hmm. have conversations with people. They have made it so they have cut these kids off from real social interactions where they don't even know how to talk to people anymore. Okay. Hey. That's, we have some serious problems. So people are always wondering, what kind of work can I do? Well, there's all kind of work you can do, but that mm-hmm. is, those things are are primary, but do before you want to jump off, before you want to become a worker, before you want to do any of those things, make sure that you got yourself as white as you can get yourself because I'm going to tell you, workers are not perfect. We are actually able to help people because we've been hurt. We've right. actually been able to be able to, how can I help? How can I have help somebody if I ain't never been through anything. How, how right. does that work? It doesn't nope. work. You know, I'm not going to sit up here and, and lie and tell people that um, I'm perfect and I ain't never been through nothing. And, you know, I, that's why I can tell you what to do. No, 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 no. Don't work like that. Doesn't work like that. So, you know, and, and you know, at the same time is, you know, have some empathy for somebody who is going through things. And then when you have empathy from somebody, you ain't won't cheat them. You see what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's just a whole bunch of things that we need to think about with the scope of magic. And, you know, and, and I don't care in, in religion and how we work with people and how we help people. And I don't think that enough people when they want to go into doing this or making those considerations. Right. That's beautiful. Yeah. This is oh, deep Liz, shit, man. Tell us, tell us what you have going on, like your classes, where we can find you online, the oh, whole nine. Okay. Just plug, plug, plug. Tell us all about man, you, what you okay, got going so on. You know you can find me at BigLizConjure.com. I am also the PR director, co- coordinator for the Black Witch Conference, so you're going to see me talking about a lot of that um, in, 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 with my business. Um, I am in the local uh, Columbus metropolitan area. You are able to find my products in local stores like the one I'm in right now, Bowline Apothecary. Um, you'll be able to find my stuff at the Magical Druid. You'll be able to find my stuff at Blessed Be in Grove City. Um, you'll be also able to find my stuff at the witchcraftstore.com. Um, there's a crystal store in Tennessee that slips my mind. Um, uh, I apologize right now, Ms. Michael, because uh, the, the store is not coming to my brain. Divine Awakenings in Sanducky. I also get around to a lot of these places to teach classes. So, you know, if you're in central Ohio, you know, take a look at um, – I'll be doing a retreat. I'm, I can't recall call the name of it, but I'll be posting about it. You guys can friend me or follow me on Facebook at Elizabeth Ruth. You also can – uh, like my page, Big Liz Conjure Corner, on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram. You can find me in all of those places. I will be offering – I said I wasn't going to do it, but folks keep asking. And at the Black Witch Conference, I couldn't get my presentation to work. Uh, the AV situation wasn't right. So there was a whole presentation that I created, and I basically winged my whole entire um, – I let spirit lead me my whole presentation for the Black Witch Conference, which I think was much better instead of giving the presentation, but I still have it, and I'm tweaking it some more. So I'll be doing Conjuring Your Everyday Life on um, uh, over online. We do it via Google Hangouts. I only have nine participants. That's to keep the cost low so I don't have to pay for um, online teaching space. Um, yeah. And I also am going to be doing Root Work 101, so both of those are on my website. I'm also going to be, over the next year or so, developing a course using Blackboard course sites, which is going to be um, probably a month-long correspondence, I'm going to say correspondence course, online 
Thank you, ma'am. Uh, an online course, not correspondence, because that's old school. I'm so old. Um, we're going to be doing an <laughs> online course. I designed online courses. I had to <laughs> call it a correspondence course. But we're going to be online every week having discussion boards. We're going to have synchronous sessions, which means we're going to meet together. People are going to have homework. They don't have to send their homework to me, but they do have to show their homework and talk about the things that they're learning. Is the receipt going to come to me? Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. So, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm checking out here at one store. I'm heading to the international grocery store where it is everything great. That's another thing. Uh, people want to um, charge people a whole bunch of stuff for conjure uh, supplies. I just found Deer's Tongue, which is $12 an ounce, but it's very lightweight. It's amazing for a lot of different workings. But a lot of the stuff that people can do, they can find in the grocery store. However, a lot of people, you two have a wonderful, blessed day. A lot of people are not like me. So you're not going to devote a whole room to your roots and your herbs. So I make these mixtures for you so that you can practice your magic. So on Big Liz Conjure, you're going to find BigLizConjure.com. You're going to find a variety of ways to practice magic. Because that's the whole thing. The whole thing is get started. You know, a lot of people don't want to have all that stuff in their house. Just like you said, a lot of people don't want to be a full-fledged practitioner. What I find is is the people that don't want to be full-fledged practitioners end up becoming them, and the ones who really shouldn't be full-fledged practitioners are the ones who decide they're, they're going to go into business. <laughs> I do readings. I do divinations. I love I do them over the phone. I do them the video conference. People are like, well, can you really do a reading over the phone or over the Internet? I said, baby, I can do a reading on a PDF. I have clients who don't want to admit that they're getting a reading done. I'll write the report, or I'll do an MP3 and send them the actual file to listen to on their own because nothing stops spirit. Once again, a combination of new technology and old beliefs. So I do all of that, you know, and I don't believe in charging everybody for everything. I have a lot of young ladies, uh, like I said, young women, not a lot of men. But remember, we are the womb bearers, so that's to be expected. But a lot of people come and ask me questions. Sometimes I can't answer questions. And sometimes I won't just try to, like, say the first thing in my mind because I think I might know something about it. I had somebody call and message me about the dream. I said, let me think on that. Because I may not know about it. And I'll go back and be like, you know, I don't know what to make of that dream, but I got the sister over here that does dream analysis. That's another thing I'm going to work towards. People who make magical things that may not want to go into business for themselves and they have really, truly wonderful, amazing skills, I'm going to start selling their stuff on my website because I can't make everything on the planet. So if you make – there's one sister, I believe her – Instagram name is Hoodoo Goddess. I love her candles. I'm going to be getting with her. Um, there's some local practitioners here I'm going to get with. So, you know, just follow me on any type of social media, especially my personal page, because the way Facebook has it set up is you're going to see more posts from my personal page than you will from my business page unless I pay for it. So, okay. follow, me, follow me. All of my posts are public. You know, I'm talking about politics. I'm talking about racism. I'm talking about magic. I'm talking about ATRs. I'm talking about witchcraft. I'm talking about crystals. I'm talking about energy because I am a child of the universe, so I'm going to tap into all of this to yeah. live my best life possible. You know, we're not going to end, say, starvation possibly maybe in my lifetime with magic, but that's not to say that we can't. Like, just like with prayer, the more people that practice, the more powerful it is. The reason why things exist in this society that we don't like is because we allow them to exist. Just like when you're with that horrible-ass man who's bringing down your self-esteem and cheating on you, messing around on you, having babies here, there, and everywhere, and with you, you're letting it happen. Right. So, you know, that's the first thing about African spirituality is a control because even when we were slaves, that's why hygiene is so important. You know, they transferred the spirit of the spirit they called hygiene into the jalapeno. Okay. They said this is where the spirit rests. And that's why we use it in our most powerful magic. But when we were slaves, that spirit of high John, and they don't they don't talk about this in a lot of um, black folks' practices, we were able to um, astrally project back to Africa. 
If you look at um, the Book of Negro Folklore by Langston Hughes and Erna Bochup, they talk about that, how they use the spirit of High John to astrally project to go back to Africa as slaves. Those are the reasons why we have survived this constant annihilation. They can't right. kill us. They keep trying. How y'all sisters doing? That's why they keep trying to kill us. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. So we can't be killed. They cannot get rid of us. Our DNA runs probably in most of their blood. Yeah, we're about to oh, go. Right. Blood. Yeah, so, you know, with our DNA, and I'm sorry, y'all, I'm out here, because, you know, they rolled up the sidewalk in Columbus at 6 o'clock, and I done seen these two sisters at the apothecary. You know, uh, it's everything in me just not to stop to talk to them, because every time I do meet sisters at the apothecary, they end up learning more and more and practicing magic. And you'd be surprised. I go up in these places, and these people don't know what they're doing. They don't know who to ask, and they ain't here asking these people who don't practice our magic, and they get co- told all kind of bullshit, okay? Right. Yeah. So it's yeah. like everything in me, you know, to be like, hey, sisters, how y'all doing? What y'all doing here? I want to know what you're doing here. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great. <laughs> you know, and I, I've met I love, I love, love people. I love you. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I saw it. Go ahead. You were breaking up. Say that again. Oh, I was going to say, I love the names of your product, like Bitch Please, Working mm-hmm. Roots, and Boots Fall and Working Roots. Um, I, I was wondering if you would close by saying how you introduce yourself to your online students. I will, and I how also you want to make a – I will, but I want to make a comment about my products. My products all come from the black vernacular, and that's done on purpose. That's beautiful. So when, when we see our products, and you say you, – you know what? You say Bitch Please in your head. You can imagine somebody hold up their hand. Going, bitch. <laughs> you know exactly what that's for. You know yep, yep. that's for protection. You, you know what it's for. You know if yep. I say no five zero, oh, you know I'm talking about the yep. purple. Other people may not know that. <laughs> yep. You know that, bitch. Buy. Yep. He made this. <laughs> he made by Felicia. Okay. Yep. Right. I told you she was gonna give you a dose of act right. So all yep. of my all because like, like I said, I'm concerned about my people. Um, I have, like, 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 like they say, I like the white friends. But my concern is the survival of us spiritually and physically, okay, and uh, intellectually. All right? uh, but I tell people, you know, don't get it twisted about me. I'm not uh, perfect. I keep trying to tell folks I'm a drinking, smoking, cussing ass kind of woman. I will bless you uh, as quickly as I will fuck you up. That's hey. it. <laughs> You're not going to get berries with me. You're not going to get ohm with me most of the time. And I probably need a little bit more ohm in my life. Yes, I do. Um, But that's the way I roll. But that's how I was before I became a worker. So for me, there are some things spiritually, yes, I've evolved, but I'm still staying true to my spirit because my spirit Mm -hmm. is what led me here in the first place. And they need Mm -hmm. people like me. They need people that are love and light. These people are all needed in this world. We need a balance. That's right. And that's, you know, okay. I'm not trying to put on a persona. This ain't no step and fetch it show. This ain't no minstrel show. I'm not here for white folks entertainment, nor am I here for black folks entertainment. But Thank you. I've been but nobody. told I'm a comedian. I definitely like to laugh. Sometimes I have mm-hmm. to laugh to keep from crying. So if I can get yeah. through to you by making you laugh, then that's okay. The Don Mal Mal Posse, Guerrilla Warfare, no man will ever stop. Cause I run with tall black skin that do not. With four pounds of silver plated chrome in their pockets. But most days I am non violent. Just don't cut my ears and I remain silent. <laughs> Cause when I speak, my truth weighs a ton. The scales tip and bricks of gold fall off my tongue. Your bars become stiff.